Black Power family, it's the General Sai Soon said here, and I'm black at y'all again with this real talk. Very, very powerful video today. The power of the Kushites and their grip over the ancient world. You know, many times we hear this term Kushite, and we don't even have any understanding that we're speaking about our own African selves. And so today we're going to be looking at the, the, the Kushite Empire from Africa into Mesopotamia, into India, and show the grip that our people had over bringing civilization to the planet Earth. I want the family to make sure they get on over there to KingSeti.com, online marketplace, official General Sai Rasun Seti, DVD lectures, t-shirts, hoodies, African and comedic jewelry, holistic ton tonics and remedies, and much, much more. For the family that's looking for that complete General Sai Rasun Seti, Website, you got to get over there to SETI University, General SETI.com, the, the uh, University of Ancient and Modern African Wisdom and Knowledge. Got hundreds, close to 800 uh, lectures and videos on the site, too raw for YouTube, band videos, SETI debates, I mean, behind the scenes footage, uh, ancient civilization and mythology, mythology SETI with the master teachers. And so much more. Get on over there today, GeneralSeti.com, SETI University. Make sure you subscribe to all my YouTube pages, General SETI, Sarasun SETI YouTube, because y'all already know SETI Live is lit. Hit that subscribe button, uh, hit that notification bell, and give all the videos a thumbs up. Thumbs up, like it because you love it. You know, SETI Live is lit. So please support me on my General Sarah Soon Seti Patreon page. Live streaming, got exclusive live streams on my Patreon. Not too many people I know is doing that. You know what I'm saying? I got over 100 exclusive live streams on that site. And, and too raw for YouTube. So get on over there and enjoy that treasure chest of knowledge. General Sarah Soon Seti Patreon. Now, today, when we're talking about Mother Kush, we're talking about you know, a lot of people, they think of the Ethiopia of the modern time. But the Ethiopia of the ancient world is Sudan. You see what I'm saying? Nubia, also known as Nubia. So when we speak of Ethiopia in the ancient world, uh, Ethiopia is Sudan. You see what I'm saying? Later on, the Ethiopia of today, which was Abyssinia first. You understand, took on the name Ethiopia. But to the Greeks and the Romans, Ethiopia was the Sudan. And so we got to be clear that this was our, you know, our black family coming up out the darkest of Africa. You see what I'm saying? Bringing civilization to the whole of the planet Earth. You see what I'm saying? Taking civilization into Sudan, uh, into a, what today is called Arabia in the ancient world was known as Sheba. You understand, taking uh, civilization into Mesopotamia, Babylon. You see what I'm saying? Taking civilization into what we call India. Long before those people that you see there today even arrived, and we don't even know when they got there. It had to have been yesterday, because you understand, we all already got documentation, you know, hard documentation, that it was the woolly head Kushites that brought civilization to all the southern extremities of the planet earth you see what i'm saying so again sudan kush or uh, also uh spell kosh that's where you get kashta or kushta or the 25th dynasty the founder of the 25th dynasty the father of pianki you see what i'm saying one of the greatest uh pharaohs to ever rule we also see even in kashmir you understand kashmir india kushmir Shri Nagar. You see what I'm saying? And we also see Kushi, which was the father of one of uh, the prophets of Yahweh in the Bible. And you see, as it goes into uh, Mesopotamia, it becomes Kish, which is the first uh, capital of Sumer. You understand? And once you understand that there are no vowels in these uh, in the ancient languages in that, you know, so the I, the A, and the U are interchangeable. So Kish, Kosh. Is Kush, you see, and so at one time, you know, to the European, the whole of the continent, continent of Africa, was known as Ethiopia. But when we speak specifically 
of the ancients, when we speak specifically of the Greeks, with the term Ethiopia is Greek, it was in reference to Egypt and specifically uh, the nation that was south of Egypt, which today we know as uh, Nubia. And you see, you know, from the Great Lakes of Africa to the ends of the Kushite Empire. You understand, this was the founding source of all Kushite civilization on the planet. And from here, it, you know, it, 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 it expanded all over the world. Oh, okay, so again, let's go on straight into the People's Bible Encyclopedia. Got some very powerful information that's going to deal with Kush. Uh, this uh, publication, this encyclopedia was produced in 1924. So, you know, they said some shit that they wish they hadn't said. But General said he got it right here, right now. Now, what does it say? This, where is the land of Cush? Now, now, it says the name of Cush was derived from Egypt. Okay, well, if you got Hindu Cush, if you got the uh, Hindu Cush mountains, and you got Kish, which is Cush in Mesopotamia, and Cush is derived from Egypt, then that explains how those areas got their name. Because we know where it came from. To the Egyptians, Kash denoted districts south of the first cataract, inhibited for the most part, uh, most part by races of a Nubian origin. So right there, that explains a lot because this Kush, this Ethiopia, is the father of Nimrod, the father of Sheba, the father of Saba. You see what I'm saying? So we got to be clear that the fa the father of these is the Sudanese. And see, that's got to be very clear because we get caught up in the more, the more modern Ethiopia and then we're not getting the full understanding that it was these, you know, the darkest of Africa, you know, and we have to state that, that took it all over the world. You understand what I'm saying? Kosh was Ethiopia of the classical geographers. And, and, and in the tablets of Tel Armana, it was called Kasi. In the later Assyrian inscriptions, the name is written Kusi. And at, at, as it is this form of the name which we find in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, however, the name has a much wider significant signification uh, than it had either in Egypt or in Assyria. See how Assyria is a, included in that. It embraces not only the African cash kush of the Egyptian monuments, but also the southern coast of Arabia, stating that it was no Arabia. That is an extension of Kush. Ain't no goddamn Arabia until there's an Arab. And so there's no Arab in the ancient world. The Arab is, is, is uh, AD people. You don't even hear of the Arab until you hear of Mohammed. Okay, and so you see the, uh, the kings of the 25th dynasty starting with Kashta and his son uh, Pianki and Shabaka. You understand it from uh, uh, Pianki came uh, sh uh, Shabitu, Biku, B Bitku, and Tahaka. You see what I'm saying? And so we we showing you where the mother Kush is. Okay, the mother Kush is in the Sudan. Okay, so when you start seeing these Kush all over the ancient world, you got to know where Mama Kush is. You understand what I'm saying? It's cause we seeing that many of the uh you know the 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 foreigners and the invaders of our colonies are now trying to say that they are even older, such as in India, than than Mother Kush. And we're gonna prove that just that's just not true. Okay? And so now let's deal with another definition in that same encyclopedia where it deals with Ethiopia. Now you see up there it says Kush. Ethiopian, so right there we know that it means burnt face. But if you go to the earlier video, which I did on Ham, which is the father of Kush, he was also burnt face. Okay, Kush, country of burnt faces, lying to the south of Egypt, corresponding to what is now called the Sudan. That's very significant because a lot of people look to the Ethiopia of today as being the mother Kush. And it's not. It's the Sudan, the country of the blacks. It was known to the Hebrews, okay? And so the name Kush and then in the uh, authorized version is Ethiopia, okay? Kish, okay? And then, you know, so I just wanted to make that very clear that the Ethiopia, you know, in uh, the Greek, 
the uh, uh, is the ver uh, this uh, pronunciation for the Hebrew, or better yet, the 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 comedic Kush or, or Kash. Okay, and so when we look here, we see the great extent of the twenty fifth dynasty. You know, you know, extending from the sixth cataract, possibly all up into you know what we call today Israel. Okay, which in the ancient world was nothing but an extension of the Nile Valley Empire. Okay, Sudan and Nubia. So I just want to make this clear. Now let's move forward. Okay, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? This is Jeremiah thirteen twenty three, and so that is even you know verifies even more. So if if, if Ethiopia Kush is black and they're making very significant. Uh, uh, reference to his skin being black, and then we look to Nimrod being the founder of Mesopotamia. We look to you know the the Nubians moving into India. We understand who was and the, when we see the new uh, woolly headed Buddhas, we know who's the founder even of that civilization, which we're gonna get off into now. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? I don't think so. And so now let's deal with this. Also coming out of the same uh, uh, biblical encyclopedia is dealing. This one coming out of the definition of Mizraim, which is Egypt. Okay, which is the brother of Ethiopia. Now, if Ethiopia is burnt face, and you the brother of burnt face, and your father's hand, which also means burnt, then what other what other can you be but burnt and black? This is where we get harm is nothing other than calm. Kim, which means burnt black. All right, then. Let's deal with it. The names of Mizraim or Egypt and the descendants of Mizraim appear to all be names of nations rather than of individuals, like the Shemites, like the Hebrews, who were tribes while the Africans were nations thousands of years before any Hebrew king ever sat on the throne. You see what I'm saying? And they include far more than Egypt. Mizraim, listen, therefore like Cush and perhaps Ham, geographically represent a center whence colonies went forth in the remotest period of post-Diluvian history. Okay, we regard the distribution of the Mizraites, Mizraites, the Egyptians, as showing that their colonies were but a, a part of the great migration that gave the Cushites, you see right there, Mizra, uh, Egypt, uh, Egyptians and Kushites are interchangeable, okay? The command of the Indian Ocean. That gave the Kushites the command of the Indian Ocean. So when we show you the, the Kush of uh, Mesopotamia, the Kush of, of India, we don't want you to think it's just a coincidence because even here in 1924, the scholars understood that this was only colonies of the one mother uh, uh, civilization coming up out of Africa, okay? And also included, if you go down here, and which explains the affinity that the Egyptian monuments show us between the pre-Hellenistic Cretans, which is, the I, which is the civilization of Crete. So even the Cretans were all of the bloodline of the Kushite, okay? Now let's go into Naga Hindu, uh, Hindu Kush India. Okay, both Kush Babylon and the Hindu Naga Kush originated in the south, you understand, coming off of the monsoons of East Africa. So when you see the monsoons, see, this is how the Africans went into Mesopotamia, because all of them civilizations start in the south. And not only in the south, on, 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 uh, on the side that's closest to Africa. Okay, when you talk about the Harappian civilization on the side of Africa. When you look at uh, Sumer starting in the south, all these civilizations started in the south because the Africans are selling in and establishing civilizations on the rivers. You know, the Indus River, the, uh, 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 the Euphrates. You see what I'm saying? And so, and you see here from uh, June to September, the wet monsoons are blowing towards India. Then from September to March, the monsoons is blowing away towards Africa. You see what I'm saying? So there is no Arabian Sea. I don't even know why the hell they would name a sea 
after some landlocked goat herders who didn't even know what the hell a ship was. And you understand until Africans showed them what a ship was. They said they was not, nothing other than shepherds and they moved on the land and the only ship that they knew was the camel. That was it. So I don't know how you name a sea after a landlocked goat herder. And then there is no Indian because the Kushites are the one that is, is establishing civilization all over the planet. So it's not the Indian Ocean, it's the Kushite Ocean. So you see right here the Harappian civilization, which, you know, they chose to go as north as they could to name the civilization, but it's Kushite and it's starting. You can see because the Africans mastered uh, uh, rivers and building civilizations on rivers wherever they went. You know what I'm saying? They took the blueprint and went right into the next colony and established civilizations as they established river civilizations all over Africa. All nations you see in the yellow are in, uh, Indian Ocean so, uh, nations that are in the Indian Ocean uh, uh, economic accord. You see what I'm saying? So the, j just like the scholar from the biblical uh, uh, encyclopedia stated, gave the Kushites command of the whole Indian Ocean. Of course, I changed it to Kushite Ocean because if the Kushites are in control of the whole of the ocean, it's they ocean. Ain't no Indian in control of nothing. And so when you go into India, you also see that they got Kashmir, which is really Kushmir. Okay, you see, and so you also see the Hindu Kush mountains. And when you get into the southern extremities, you see a lot of stone temples. You understand, in the southern extremities, you see a, of India, and even going into other uh, nations, Cambodia, Thailand, Burma, you see these stone uh, pyramid temples that come, you know, by basic design of the uh, pyramid temples in Kush, Sudan, and Kush, Egypt, okay, and so you even go in and see that they have a Kushan empire, even in, even in India, now if the word Kush comes from Egypt, Egypt, because Egypt brought forth language, brought forth writing, you understand, have the oldest text on the planet earth, in, in, in hundreds of thousands into the millions of scrolls, we have no doubt, you understand, and now, let's deal with this, a, a pedomach, which is one of the great uh, deities of Naga Kush. We even got a Naga Kush showing that, you know, much of the language is, is shared across the uh, Ethiopian Kushite Empire. You see, a Petamak was a lion headed warrior god worshipped by the Meroic people inhabiting Nubia. Okay, a number of the Meroic, Meroic uh, temples dedicated to this de deity are known from the western Bhutana region. Na Naga, Nakwa, which they try to use the Q, Nakwa, but it, which is Naga, M Moro, uh, Meroe, uh, 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 Musarat, El S uh, Safra, which seems to be his chief cult place. Now you see right there, the lion with three heads. You see what I'm saying? The lion with three heads. And then you see that's, you know, they didn't, you know, of course, they didn't, it, it didn't got old. And some people probably went over there and just scribbled it off. But when you go into India, you also see that uh, the major symbol, especially of the Ascoa, uh, Ascoa, which is a skier, uh, 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 rule, you know, under that king in India, Ascoa, you see he also have the three-headed lion, which I brought forth, you know, a long time ago. You know, you know so just like you got a Ascoa, you got a skier. You got many uh, terms and words that is shared across all Ethiopian colony, colonies. Now, let's go into Kush, Sheba, Saba. So when you talk about Kush and you're talking about Sudan, his children, Dedan, Sheba, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, these are the sons of Kush. Sudan, we got to understand that. You understand what I'm saying? So we don't have no misunderstanding that these was the darkest of our people. And, I, I'm, and I'm stressing that. You understand what I'm saying? Because today you want to say that Saba, Saba was some Arabs and, and this, that, and the third. And we're not going to let you get away with that. You understand what I'm saying? And some 
Africans who who daddy might be in there might try to let you get away with that. But so we got to take it to the truth of the matter that the the Kush Ethiopia of the ancient world is Sudan. You see what I'm saying? You see here even Babylonia, which was Nimrod, even Persia, yeah, where Elam is of Ethiopian origin. You see what I'm saying? They sailed in. That's why all of those, you don't see nothing uh, coming from the north. They all start in the south. You understand? Because the, the Kushites and the Egyptians are sailing in. You see what I'm saying? And there's no civilization whatsoever coming from the north. Okay, let's deal with Kush, uh, Elam, Babylon. You see what I'm saying? We deal with Kush, Sheba, Saba. Let's deal with Kush. Uh, Elon Babylon, and it says Cush begot Nimrod, Cush Sudan, Cush Ethiopia, burnt phrase. And so at the beginning of his empire was Babel, Ebrek, Akkad, Akkadia, the land of Shinar. You understand? And out of that came Assyria, okay? So we got to understand. And so let's move over and get, and Cush begot, this is Genesis 10, 6, and it said, and Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one. In the earth, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Okay, and it says 10, uh, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, and Akkad, and Kalni in the land of Shinar. Out of that land went forth Ashur, and builded Nineveh, and the city of Rehoboth, uh, Re, uh, and Kala. Okay, well, so when we look at this uh, uh, map, we see that the first capital, if you look to the left, the first capital of Sumer was Kush. Now, it's pronounced Kish, but we understand that's Kush. You understand what I'm saying? It's Kish is Kush. So the first capital of Sumer was Kush. And you see the sister civilization to the right Susa, Sudan, Susa, Sufi, Suma, uh, uh, Sudra, you understand? Black, okay, which we could easily show without any problem. You see Sufi, Susa, Sudan, Sudra, Suma. And so when you look at what the Elam might look, you see they was woolly head with black skin. This is right there at the museum of Susa for anybody that want to go see that. Now, what would, other, what would a white man want to paint himself black for and put woolly head, hair on his head for? We got to deal with that. You understand? We got to understand that these are our people. Okay? And so you say Kush, Seba, Havila. Now that's very important because I'm going to also show you that there's a Havila in the Hindu Kush. Now we talk about Kush, Garden of Eden. We talking about Ethiopia. Now they want to say, well, maybe it was an Asiatic Ethiopia. It don't, mean, it don't mean a damn thing because Ethiopia still means burnt face, whether it was Asiatic or whether it was African, but when we deal with the uh, genealogy that the African Kush is the father Kush. So if we're dealing with the Garden of Eden, and this is the first garden or uh, uh, first uh, home of humanity on the planet, then we have to assume that the father Kush had to come before any son or any could, you know, you know, we could give credit to any Asiatic Kush. You see what I'm saying? We got to, you know, and but this is when, you know, they reach and for anything not to give credit to Africa. And it says Genesis, and I, I believe this is uh, 2 and uh, 10, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that which compasses the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is bedillium and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. Sudan. See, we got to say it now. Sudan. Okay? Sudan. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden and, and, and thence it was parted and, and became into four heads. Okay? And so, we see again that the ancient curse is Sudan, not, you know, and we understand that eventually Aksum would overtake uh, Nubia. You understand what I'm saying? It would overtake Nubia and, and bring uh, uh, Moro into uh, into the uh, the civilization and empire of Aksum. 
You see what I'm saying? But let us be clear that when we deal with the most ancient civilization on the planet, it was the Kush of the Sudan. And so when we talk about, you know, uh, let me get back. And, and, and let me get back. And the name of the third 14 is Hadikio and that which go off towards the east of Assyria. And the fourth is Euphrates. So there's only uh, three nations to be mentioned in reference to the Garden of Eden, Havilah, Ethiopia, and Assyria. And we, uh, and we can back it up that all three of them, Havilah, is the son of Cush. And we understand that uh, Assyria was founded by Nimrod, also son of Cush. So all three nations are Cushite nation. Now when you go to, uh, and I got it right here, seven, and the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah. You can go right into India, and they got uh, Dadra uh, uh, and Nagar Havili, okay? Dadra and Nagar Havili, which is Havilah. How is you going to have all of these coincidences? You see what I'm saying? How is you going to have all these coincidences? Now, today, the Ethiopia of today is also known as Kush. But we have to understand that, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is a later, you understand, Kush. It's a later Kush. Okay, and I have to state that because it is attributed some, to some biblical. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and so, you know, we have to understand that the Sudan Nubia is, 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 is thousands of years before biblical. Okay, thousands and thousands of years before biblical. And we talking about, we're not talking about twos and fews either. You understand what I'm saying? We're talking about Nubia is at least six, seven thousand years older than anything ever mentioned in the Bible. So we got to be clear about that. But there is a uh, a prophet in the uh, Bible, Zephanie, and who is the son? If you go down in Zephanie and you see uh, one, the word of the Lord that came from Zephanie, the son of Cushi, huh? The son of Cushi, son of Gedaliah, uh, Gedaliah, son of Amara, Amara, son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. Okay, what I'm saying? So we see right there that even prophets of the Bible came from the lineage of the black Cushites. And that's not saying much because the Hebrews was goat herders. When we talk about Sudan, we talking about the greatest monuments, some of the greatest monuments ever been con constructed on the planet Earth. So, the word Cushy <coughs> is generally used in the Hebrew Bible to refer to dark skin to dark-skinned person of African descent, which we already went through. We talk about Candace, the name of the queen of, uh, of the Ethiopians who high treasure was, was converted to Christianity under the preaching of Philip the Evangelist, Acts 8, 27, AD 34. Candace was probably a distinctive title born by successive queens as Pharaoh and Ptolemy. The country over which she ruled is the region in Upper Nubia called by the Greek Moro. Moro, okay? Moro. And so that we, we're backing it up. You understand? Kandaki. Kandaki. Candace or Kandaki. Okay, and she ruled. And so again, we speaking to the Sudan. And so, you know, and I don't, you know, and then we talking about, uh, as, you know, this is also dealing with Nimrod, you know, and, and the way that it is explained, it starts in Babel, it shows you in the Bible that it goes from the south to the north, that Assyria and Nineveh coming out of Babylon, coming out of the land of Shinar in the south. You see what I'm saying? And so it shows you that the civilization moved from the south to the north. And you see right here, uh, in uh, also in India, Kushi Nagar. Kushi Nagar. We see right there the, the, the city of Kushi, which means black, which means burnt fat. Okay? Now, we're dealing with uh, Drusilla Dungeon Houston, the uh, ancient uh, Kushite Empire. 
You see what I'm saying? Let, let's deal with this one. It says, okay, the rich merchants of the, uh, and I'm dealing with the one, two, three, on the third uh, sentence, the rich merchants of the ancient Indian commerce have been Dravidians. One of the great kingdoms was Pandaya, so noted in the Sanskrit writings. The Nandas in Bihar, of whom the great Chandra Gupta sprang, and his greater grandson, Askoa, Askia, was non Aryan. They were of the supposed to be degraded Sudra, Sud, Sud, Sudan, okay? The Tashak. The Tashaka, because it's spelled with a A, the Tashaka and the Naga nations who figure so largely in Sanskrit traditions are words pur purely African. And in the Sanskrit tradition, uh, Tashaka was the king of the Nagas. He was the king of the Nagas. Okay? So, family, I want y'all, when you take a, a look at... Uh, you going through the ancient world, you in especially off of today, what you call the Indian Ocean, and you look and you see the term Kush all throughout Mesopotamia, India, Africa, understanding like, wow, why is this a coincidence? No, it's not a coincidence. You understand what I'm saying? It's not a coincidence. Even in the ancient world, they understood that these were two halves of one great empire. And this is why you see the woolly-headed Buddhas, which I'm going to be dealing with in the next episode of the Nagas. You got to look at it and, 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 and put Ham and, and, and the one I did on Ham and the one I did on uh, uh, Kush and the one I, I'm doing on Naga. I'm doing one also on Moor. You understand what I'm saying? And you got to put them together. And these are the musical notes that create the cosmic melody. You understand what I'm saying? A black divinity. And when you play these notes, I guarantee you the, the major uh, uh, evidence of African greatness on the planet and in the cosmos will appear to you out of nowhere. I want to thank you for your time, energy, and support. Get on over there to kingseti.com, generalseti.com, Patreon, General Sarai Sudan Seti. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that uh, notification bell and like the bit video because you love it. All right. Peace.